In this lecture, I'll show you how to download the VIOS router, then how to get it running as a virtual machine in VMware, and finally, how to configure the networking settings on it to provide connectivity in the lab. I've got the how to build the lab PDF open, and in the bookmark section, I'll go to the VIOS router build. And in here, up at the top, you can see the link for the download page. So I will click on that. And then when it opens, I'll scroll down a little to the get the software section. And what you want is the 64-bit image, the ISO image. So I will click on that. And then that will click off the the download i've actually already downloaded it to save time so i've already got this in my downloads folder that's how you can get it as well next thing i'm going to do is go to windows explorer and i'm going to create a new folder to put my virtual machines in so i'm just going to do this at the root of the c drive i will go new folder i will call this netapp lab and then in the NetApp Lab folder, I will create another new folder in there, call it VIOS for my VIOS virtual machine. And then I'll go up to my downloads folder where I've got the VIOS ISO file, and I'm going to move that into the VIOS folder that I just created. Okay, now we're ready to create the virtual machine. So I will open up VMware Workstation Player. And then when this opens, I am going to create a new virtual machine. And then I need to browse to the ISO file here. So select the installer disk image file and click on browse. And then browse to the NetApp Lab folder that we just created and the VIOS folder. And there is the ISO file that we just downloaded. Double click on that and then click on next. Then for the virtual machine name, call it VIOS and browse to the VIOS folder that we just created. So that was in C and NetApp Lab and VIOS. Okay. And then I can click on next again will accept the default size for it. I'll store it as a single file rather than multiple files just to keep things a bit tidier and click on next. And then check that the settings all look okay. So let me go back to the PDF again and scroll down here. So you can see everything I did there. And yeah, we need to actually add some network adapters as well, because by default, it's only got one. So let me just drag this PDF over to my other window here, and you can follow along with what I'm doing. So back in VMware, we don't want to power it on after creation. So I'm going to uncheck that and click on finish. And it will now show up here in my VMware player window. And I'm going to edit the virtual machine settings. And you can see here by default, it's only got one network adapter. Now, because this is going to be a router, it's not going to be able to route very much if it's only connected to one network. So we need to add the other network adapters and connect them to all of the correct networks in VMware. So I'm just looking back at the PDF again here. I'm going to check how many we need to add. Okay, and I need to add six more adapters. So we're going to have up to adapter seven. So to do that, I click on add and I choose network adapter and finish. So I've got two and I'm going to keep adding network adapters until I've got my seven network adapters. So that's us up to four and then five and two more to go there is six and seven okay done now notice there's a funny kind of glitch with vmware in that it usually puts these in out of order when you first add them 
and that's going to make it difficult to put the virtual networks in the correct order it's going to make them probably mixed up so what to do now is just click on ok and then click on edit virtual machine settings again and when we go back into it it will have reordered these into the correct order that's going to make it a lot easier to see what we're doing and to organize this okay and then i need to put these into the correct networks so let's actually have a look at the pdf again i'll just drag it back into my main window here and i'll go to the lab topology diagram and you can see all of the different networks here so i'm going to configure these different vmnet networks on my vios router and then after i've done that i need to make sure i get it in the right order so that when i configure the ip addresses on the router they are connected to the correct network if you get these mixed up then it's going to break the network connectivity so be careful and make sure you do these exactly as it's documented in the pdf so i'll go back to the pdf again just scroll down to that section again and find a bit where it tells me which adapter is in which network okay so i've got it here and i'll drag that over to my other monitor and i'm going to put that in the network settings here so the first adapter is going to be in vmnet one so i i click on it here to select it and i go to custom click on the drop down and i put that in vmnet one then i click on adapter two which is going to be in vmnet two adapter three is in vmnet three just to keep everything really logical adapter four is in vmnet four adapter five is in vmnet 5 but then 6 and 7 are different 6 is going to be in vmnet 7 and then 7 is going to be in vmnet 9 it's because 6 and 8 are actually the cluster networks which are private networks for our on tap cluster so the the virus router is not going to be connected to those at all Okay, then I'll just click out of here and check that that all looks okay. Okay, that looks fine. And then I'll click okay to that. And I can start up the virtual mach machine by clicking play virtual machine. Then I'll just full screen this window. We'll see it starting to boot up. It's asking me if I want to do any software updates. I don't need to do that right now. So I'll just close that window. And then I just need to watch the router booting up here. And in a little while, I'm going to get my normal command prompt here. Now, while it's booting up here, it's actually booting up from the virtual CD in VMware. So it will boot up just fine. And I could configure settings in here but the problem is that the next time I restart it, it's going to lose those settings. So what I need to do here is I need to do some basic configuration, configure it to boot up from its hard drive. And then after I've done that, I can configure all the network settings and that's going to be permanent. They will remain even after a reboot. So I need to log in first. The default username and password are both VIOS. So you can see VIOS there, that's the username and exactly the same VIOS is the password as well. Then the command I need to enter is install image. Would I like to continue? Yes. Then it will ask me which partition, auto is fine. I accept the default there and then install the image on SDA. I want to take the default there as well. So I can just hit enter to accept the default. It's going to warn me it's going to destroy all data. I don't have anything there anyway. So yes, I can continue. For how big of a root partition I want it to be, I want it to be the maximum size. That's the default. So I can just hit enter to accept that. And it's now going to create the file system for me. Well, this is happening in my other monitor. I'm just going to scroll down a bit on the PDF. So to do that, to break out of the VMware window, hold down the control and alt keys at the same time. You have to do that to get your mouse back again. So I've done that. 
and I'm just waiting for this to be done. Actually, it's asking me next question. So what would I like to name that image? 118, that's fine. I'll take the default there as well. And then which one should I copy to SDA? Again, hit enter for the default. It's now asking me what password I want to use. I'm going to use a password of flackbox1. And then I re-enter it again to make sure I didn't make a typo. Which drive should Grub modify the boot partition on? SDA default's good again, so I just hit enter to accept that. And then I get a command prompt again. Okay, so in my other monitor, I'm just scrolling down to see what we need to do next. Okay, once this is done, that's the basic install of VIOS done. But like I said, it's going to boot up from the CD next time. So we still have work to do before we can configure the network settings. What I want to do now is to power it off. So the command is just one word, power off, and then yes to accept that. And the system is now going to halt. When that is done, I need to open up the virtual machine in VMware again. So I go back to programs and VMware and open up VMware Workstation Player. And then click on the VIOS virtual machine and then edit the virtual machine settings again. And what I need to do now is go to the CD DVD because this is what it is booting up from now. And then uncheck the connected power on and use physical drive instead. So that's going to prevent it from doing the same default boot up from the CD every time. And once I have done that, I can click on OK and I can play the virtual machine. Okay, so this will boot up again from the hard drive. So this now allows me to save permanent settings in my virtual machine. So now I'm going to actually do the, the network configuration in here after it boots up. So just give this a few seconds to boot and then I'm going to log in and then I'm going to configure my network interfaces. Okay, so that is it booted up. The login, the username is the same again, was Vios and the password I configured earlier was flatbox1. I now get my command prompt. I need to go into the configuration mode first. So the command for that is configure, and then I'm going to configure the IP addresses on my interfaces. So the command is set interfaces ethernet, and then the first one is eth0. So this is for the, the first network adapter, which is connected to my first VMnet network. And that is going to have the address of 172.23.1.254 and it's a slash 24. Okay. Again, be really careful when you're putting this command in. Make sure that you do not miss any of the keywords or any of the configuration here or it's not going to work. That's my first interface done. I can then just hit the up arrow to get that command back again and edit it. So the next interface is the second interface, which is ETH1, and it is going to have the address 172.23.1, sorry, .2.254. And I can then hit the up arrow again and do this for ETH2, which is going to be on 172.23.3, and then hit the up arrow again. And this is for E3, and it's going to be in 172.23.4. Hit the up arrow again, and the next interface is going to be on 172.23.5. Now, notice when we configured this in VMware, it was network adapter 1 was in VMnet 1, and network adapter 2 was in VMnet 2, and so on. When we configure the virus router, it does not start the numbering from one here. It starts from zero, which is why if zero is on 172.23.1, which is VMnet one. 
ETH1 is on 172.23.2, which is on VMNet2 and so on. So the numbers are just offset by one there. So I've gone up to 172.23.5. And if you remember, we then missed one of the networks. So the next interface, which is ETH5, is not going to be on 172.23.6. It's going to be on 172.23.7. And then hit the up arrow again. And this is my last interface, which is the ETH6 interface. And it is on 172.23.9. Okay, so that is now all of my interfaces configured. But I still need to save my config as well. And also before I do that, I'm going to enable secure shell. It's SSH on the router. So to do that, the command is set service SSH and then set service SSH allow root. And that allows me to SSH into the router later. So I can use PuTTY to connect to the router later if I need to. Then I'm just going to scroll down in my PDF here to check the next commands. And last thing I need to do is the commit command makes the commands take effect and then the save command makes it persistent across a reboot okay so that's it that's my vios router completely configured now the last thing that i'm going to do is to test it so for that i am going to open up a command prompt from my laptop here if you remember in the, the lecture earlier where we installed and configured VMware, I'd configured an IP address on my laptop of 172.23.1.10. And it should now have connectivity to the 172.23.1.254 IP address on the VIOS router. So let's check that by pinging it. So I'll ping 172.23.1.254. And I'm getting a reply there, so that all looks good. My connectivity is fine. If you do this, if you ping and it fails, then you've made a mistake somewhere. Either when you were configuring the IP address on your local laptop and the static route there, or you've made a mistake when you were configuring the virus router. So if the ping doesn't work, then you'll need to go back, really start at the beginning, do it again, make sure that you follow the steps exactly as shown and then it will work just fine. Okay, so that is my VIOS router done now. I'm not going to shut it down. What I'm going to do is go to the player and then go to power and then I'm going to suspend the guest. That means that when I power this back on again, it's going to come on a lot quicker. It also just makes it more stable and reliable as well by saving the current state and always just starting up from there rather than doing a shutdown and a full reboot every time. So I'll suspend the guest and then click on yes that will close vmware workstation player and now i'm ready to move on with the next start next step in the lab build which we'll do in the next video